Hey y'all, it's your girl Millie Chun. Let's get into Love and Marriage Huntsville. Let's go. So Tiffany has made it to Stormy's. She has baby Ace in tow. And we realized that that is something to keep the peace because Kiki is ready to go off. And um, she tells Tiffany exactly what the problem was, even going back to the spa day. And when she asks Tiffany, did you know what Tisha has done to me? And Tiffany's response is no. That's all the reason that Tiffany should keep her mouth closed. First of all, we got to give a shout out to Baby Ace. He was the cutest, silent mediator I've ever seen. But I will say this, what Kiki is saying. Uh, Tiffany went off what Tisha was saying. She did not give Kiki a chance to say what she needed to say. And she formed opinions. And Tiffany, that is why we all have a problem with you. Because you just pop off and 10 times out of 10, you don't know what you're talking about. And I'm so glad that Tiffany did double verification when she relayed everything back to Kiki that she had said. I, Tiffany, cannot speak on your character because I have not got to know you, so I should do that. Thank you. Let's keep going. Not Stormy sporting the old school herringbone. I see one of these in a minute. <laughs> I see you, Stormy. So Chris has gone over to Martel's new house, right? And he was like, shout out to Martel for moving out of my place so he can properly list the place where Martel had moved. It's a shame that he took that long to do that. Martel walking around the house with shades on because he didn't have a little cosmetic surgery. <laughs> so I know y'all saw that hole in Martel's sock. I don't know what that's about, but... Chris is talking about the dinner that he had with his kids. He's telling Martel about Alexis. I still feel like Alexis, uh, because she was on the outside of everybody in the house with her dad and Nail, like, you got to understand, she feels like an outsider. So, we can get to that. Now, let's get into Chris getting into Martel about talking to his wife. So I'm on Chris's side because when Martel said that his Chris's wife gets disrespectful sometimes and his response was truthful or disrespectful, anytime somebody is saying something that is the truth towards Martel when he feels it's wrong, he deems it disrespectful. And Chris is a little too calm and a little too far from him. He need to go and dot these eyes again. And for him to sit here and say he going to check a woman, any woman, Preferably Chris's woman if she's being disrespectful beyond measure. Period. He said period. So Chris saying that Nell is passionate about how she says things is a cop out for me because you eventually he had her back because he told Martel to come to him if he has a problem. But you shouldn't have said that. You should have just told him. Don't talk to my wife like that. But then for him to say, if I disrespect your wives, I'm going to call you and we can talk about it. How about don't be disrespectful in the beginning, Martel? But what I will agree with him on is I'm tired of this cheating narrative, right? It doesn't matter anymore. They're not together. And if Mel cheated, it was warranted. Let's keep going. This baby right here cannot with the name change ceremony. He feels like Chris and Nell are taking a side. Chris said it's the Holt side and a Roger side. So then he says that I feel like she's trying to get clout. How can she get clout off of her name? And then he's like, it feels so final, like before I met her. That's right. Y'all are not together. And the fact that he feels like Mel is trying to destroy him, sir, this has nothing to do with you. If you want somebody's last name to be Holt, go work on that curry. <laughs> So we're here with these two at the vaginal steam rejuvenation spot, right? We all knew that she was not pregnant, right? That was just even stupid to even say that line or producers would allow her to say that script. That was dumb. But she's still talking about her libido. And I'm tired of that. We need to find her something else to talk about. Let's keep going. Tisha is a quitter to me, right? Um, she talks about how after she had Mila and um, she got her in school and she went back to work because she wanted more. Now, her husband, Marsha, did not want her to have more because he was not really for her going out of the house to work. Uh, but she is saying that it's been a lot on her. The Espo, uh, the thing with Kiki, um, the casino night, 
that I could see how that could take a toll on her. But she's just not a real strong person either. And being married to Marsha, like, she's gaslit every second of her day. Now, Tisha said, Marsha said that they need to see a family therapist. I don't know if that's true, but that's what she said. And then she said she's, you know, she asked her daughter, has she been yelling at her more? There is probably a lot of stress that Tisha is under. This show is probably stressful. What we have to say about her is stressful, but that's what you put out. So, but I hope they get the help that they need. I really hope she gets what she needs. So we got Chris Fletcher Sr. and Chris Fletcher Jr. CJ is coming to the office to talk to his dad, and let's see how this goes. CJ over here still talking about these dogs. He doesn't get it, right? Now I get it. I had to pay an unnecessary $6,000 to get you out of jail for something that you sh that's a place you shouldn't have even been. In. And then, secondly, how much do you really love these dogs? Because we had to pay $3,800 to take them to the vet. Did you know they had to go to the vet? Why hadn't they already gone to the vet? Sir, I'm going to need you, like your father said, be a man. Stand up. And I'm not saying that he's not feeling a certain way. I'm not being insensitive to his feelings. But the thing is this. You don't want to hear people's opinions about you. Don't do things to give people negative opinions. And it's not right that he would go weeks without talking to his family just because he doesn't want to hear them tell him the right thing to do. They've been here before you, sir. They know better. This is your family. You should listen. And like Chris said, that's why we have the doggone dinner. So we can talk about it and be a family. This generation, child. I don't think we didn't know this, but we do understand why the children go to Chris instead of Nell, right? Because Chris is very level-headed and he can literally talk because he actually listens. Nell is a high head, right? We can agree on that. But as CJ is sitting here and explaining to his dad how he feels like they put their opinions on him, they point the finger, how the whole family has issues and how he goes to the yo, is that what he said? At two and three o'clock in the morning and how he has to keep going. And Chris is listening to him and he's saying, you know, it sounds to me like you are a little depressed. And this is his reaction because as his father, he is concerned for his child. Like he's concerned for all of them. And you understand why they go to Chris. I love Chris. So Chris has told him that like he's there for him no matter what. And he'd rather for him to call him than be out at two o'clock in the morning in the street Call him at two or whatever. And then CJ says that maybe he will go to counseling. So I hope that this is something that this family can do. And we love this family on our television. Like, this is fantastic. And we love all of them now. At least I do. How do you feel about them? Let's keep going. So we're here with the Whitlows, right? Big Lou is finally on the scene, like having a scene. He says life has been lifing and Ace has been acing. Um, Tiffany says she wasn't quite prepared and she thought the snapback was going to be different. So let's see what the Whitlows have to say. Let's get into it. So Tiffany is telling Lou that she and Kiki had a conversation at Stormy's. And she says she felt like uh, Kiki was genuine and she appreciated it. And Lou said that he was glad it happened like that because he's been concerned about Tiffany and her mental. Tiffany is experiencing postpartum depression, right? She has two older boys who are wanting more. She has a younger baby who is needing everything. She has a husband that in her mind, she doesn't know what's really going on there, right? And then she's still wearing this jewelry from CVS. But having Ace and it's and as hard as she went in the paint, about that is not panning out for how she wanted it to be. Just because you didn't have problems with your other baby doesn't mean that you won't have problems with another baby. So we're going to lose the Whitlows. <sighs> Tiffany has broken me down. Um, but let me say this. We have the Fletchers. And if Tiffany and Lou could give us this right here, this show would be in orbit. But we can't be selfish and ask for this because Tiffany really does need to take care of herself. She needs to feel worthy and get back to being her. I'm happy that Lou is so supportive and he loves his wife. And I just hope the Whitlows get better as a whole. It's your girl Millie Chun. I'll talk to y'all later. Bye. <laughs>